and welcome it's Howard from HDS Electrical and today we are going over one of the worst fuse board installs I've ever seen. So we're gonna go back and replace it so we'll get some more video footage and some pictures of it before we replace it. Sadly the owner is taking the builder and the electrician to court but it's the same job we installed a cooker supply recently so we'll kind of pop those in at the end as well and link those up um, but it's just an absolute mess so I'm just going to dive straight in. We have two BG boards, double stacker, one top, one bottom. Not the end of the world but it just gets worse as we carry on. Firstly tails come from outside two two Henley blocks and then two sets of tails just loop in loads of slack about a meter to two meters in length just dive into the top left of the board this is the only picture we got available at the minute so Ryan's gonna put a picture on now so first off there's no fire protection no cable gripper on the mains tails especially the top one being two meters long, you can kind of see it loops down. Easy to get caught on something, easy to get snagged on something, easy to get pulled. Worst case, put stress, you know, best case, sorry, put stress on the connections and just isn't good for it. Worst case, all sorts of bad things can happen. Now, worryingly, the building team came back to fit the stairs and we don't know who or how happened because I've got a picture of here and it's fine they have individual Henley blocks for live earth and neutral we fixed the earth because that was loose as well that's another thing the live the live connected to the mains connected to the 100 amp main 1361 fuse was missing its cover after the stairs was fitted now we have no idea how this happened could have been smashed accidentally by people lifting the stairs in the worrying thing was the screw was missing and there was no damage to the box now if the lid had been snapped and broken they are brittle bakelite i don't know why we make them out of that but anyway they are brittle bakelite i'd expect the screw still to be in there and possibly a broken down bit of thing the fact the screw was physically missing is really worrying um, and yeah they just had the mains exposed we went round to change a breaker in the board because it was Arga wanted a 32 feeding their Arga even though we had a 10 mil cable but you know got to comply with the manufacturer's instructions and we found this Henley block cover was missing I mean I've never seen anything so dangerous I've seen things occasionally as dangerous but Without doubt, that's up there with the most dangerous things on site. You touch out with something metal, you touch out with your hand. I literally told her it was an annex next door to a house. Dude, lock the annex and do not go in till we change that Henley block tomorrow morning because if someone touches that, that is game over. That is death. Oh, I'm trying not to shudder while I'm thinking about it. Anyway, let's jump back on the boards. Second issue, holes in the bottom holes in the sides c1 access to live exposed parts if anyone puts their finger in put say a bit of metal in they could touch the buzz bar underneath again straight to mains scary thought luckily they had rcd protection on most of it but it's just scary that electricians would leave this in today's age if there's holes in it an easy fix is to put trunking around it fix some trunking jobs are good and also means it doesn't comply with the fire regs but you know compared to someone touching live parts that's a bit of a walk in the park wrong size breaker this was a shocker so we came in to install a new cable because they had a four mil cable that the electrician swore and the builder swore was six mil but Arga told her it was four mil when they refused to fit the Arga we told her it was four mil and it had four mil written on the side this was on a 32 amp breaker and when I did the calculations it was 
can't remember which reference method it was. It was in another video we shot. Loosely run down in timber stud wall, backing onto insulation when we actually looked it up. I think the cable had a rating on that reference method alone of 18.5 bad for a 32 mil breaker. What makes it all the worse is this is an Arga that is designed to run around the clock. So that's not like it just rises to its load and then drops off once it's heated or while it's heating. That rises to its load and just stays there. So that means that cable heats up and rather than losing its heat as it perhaps cools down, stops using the load, it heats up and it just stays near that load for a very long period. That was proper dangerous. That is one of the biggest fire hazards I've seen from misuse of breaker, purely because breaker was so over spec for the thing, but it's just a constant load, constant load. It was a shocking, really. Um, so we changed that. We put in a 10, ah, reference method three. I wrote it in my notes. Probably should have read them before doing this video. And I was right, we worked out it could take 18.5. So, inadequate cable grip on mains. That was where we had these big looping loose cables. I've given that a C2 because it was so easy just to pull it, tug it, catch something on it. Pfft, doesn't bear thinking about fire seals. C3, missing fire seals. In reality, probably not a huge deal. It's like plastic consumer units, you know. It's very unlikely to cause issue. It has caused a few issues, which is why we now use metal and use fire seals, but compared to the others, it's a walk in the park. No grommets, grommets are multiple cable entries. So they had trunking, top and side, and in between the boards. Lots of just knockouts knocked out without any grommets on. So obviously cables wedged up against metal because of the way they would used the trunking. And on one hole at the top particularly, they've got about six cables wedged through this hole, squeezed between the case and the trunking. That's just metal putting pressure on those cables. Is it a danger risk? Not really, because what might happen is it wears through the cable slowly. Once it wears through the cable slowly, it's gonna arc or short circuit to the case, trip it out. It was all RCD protected, but it's just gonna trip out very quickly and just cause a real nuisance, maybe a bit of a pop in reality, unless someone removes that trunking, which was built into the wall. So it's not able to remove easily without damage. It's all good. It's not really gonna be a problem, just a nuisance problem. And this is a big one we're going to talk to you about. I initially labelled this a C3, but I thought I'm going to run this through and see what my governing body NAPIT suggests. I say NAPIT, they say NAPIT, so we're going to start saying NAPIT. So I think it's NAPIT. If anyone knows, <laughs> whack it in the comment section. Or if you're NIC, whack that in the comment section. I called up their technical and run them through these issues. What do you think we should do? I mean, the amount of work we'd have to do to it, we're thinking we rip it all off, install a new double stacker RCBO board anyway, at least then you get the RCBO protection. They kind of agreed with the logic. Armoured cable run inside without the gland used. So we're going to record this in another video. I didn't realise how important it was. So obviously the armoured cable provides some mechanical protection. What a lot of people, particularly gardeners, going in, whacking it in in some landscape gardening, don't realise is actually the primary function of the armouring isn't to give it mechanical protection. It is to trip it out as soon as possible in the event of a fault. So say you're digging, you put your fork through it, your fork goes through the armouring into the live conductor, electrifies the fork, comes straight out, straight through the armoring, short circuit to earth quicker, taking most of the fault path to earth because it's less resistance than through the fork and through you. So it takes most of the fault path away and it operates that breaker a bit quicker, operates an RCD quicker. 
that is the primary function, that is the biggest safety function in an armoured cable. The armouring is second. So I called them up thinking this might be a C3 and I specifically put this is the first line of defence, the armouring is designed first and foremost to trip the breaker, ADS, automatic disconnection of supply, and divert the majority of the fault current to earth. Its primary function is to safely operate the trick device, blah, blah, blah. We have coded it, so I changed it to, we have coded it to C2, because if a fault occurs, then it's dangerous. Now I initially put C3, possible C2 if fault occurs, but the NAPIT technical guy, Trevor, reminded me, well, you don't know when this fault is going to occur. You need to put it to these regs because what if a fault occurs tomorrow? We need to act as if a fault could occur at any time because it could occur at any time. We don't know when it's going to occur, so it needs this protection now. Because if someone goes digging tomorrow and actually they're landscaping the front because it's a building site, then there is a potential someone could do that. There also, I think it goes to one of the aircon units. I suspect they go outside with armor, armor cable along the building. The building's been clad. What if someone goes through with a nail gun? Pfft. Then, you know, that we, we need to make sure it's got that earthing so it's protected straight away before someone needs it rather than if someone needs it simples so yeah pretty bad the only final one which i initially labeled a c3 but the examiner the technical guy said a c2 we had six cables six lighting circuits on one b6 which isn't ideal but the worst thing was there was must have been in the bottom board alone four spare breakers so rather than go and just get some six amp breakers they just shoved them all on one that gives you no selectivity if there's a fault on one you're losing all the lights just a really bad lazy install i could understand if you're trying to squeeze it in and you haven't got any spare breakers you know thankfully he didn't try and put it on the wrong size breaker i suppose we'll give him that but yeah, it's just lazy. If you've got spare ways, you just put some more breakers in and spread them across the breakers. It's, we don't even understand why he didn't do that other than laziness. So I discussed it with a guy. The guy said, because you got five odd, let's label that a C2. It's not like one or two or three. So many. They're going to lose all their lights in one trip. They're going to lose all their lights if something else on that RCD bank goes. It's just stupidness. It's potentially dangerous because if someone's got absolutely no light in their house, they're elderly couple, disabled, vulnerable, it's potentially dangerous. And yeah, I got that logic to be fair. So I changed that from a C3 to a C2, but all in all, the worst fuse board I've ever changed, that was new. I've seen some bad fuse boards in my time. They're normally old. This is brand spanking new and it's just a shocking mess. So follow me outside and we'll uh, do another video.